Hello and welcome back to the Vintage Super League. I just had a fantastic match against Chris Bakula, and all I oh, can say is, wow. Fantastic, maybe overselling. Well, <laughs> well, as far as vintage games involving Seeker of the Way and Dragon Lord Ujitai go, it was a good match. It was. It was one of the better Seeker of the Way, Dragon Lord Ujitai vintage matches I've seen. I can't disagree with that. Um, it's funny, I you cast Seeker of the Way, and I was like, Seeker of the Way? Oh, I guess he cast this thing before when I didn't care. But all of a sudden, <laughs> like I had forgotten you. It, your deck was, obviously, I, it was hard for me to guess the exact build of your deck. Um, right. I, my, my takeaway from all this, so I, I don't know about you, obviously you've been playing a lot of vintage recently, so I'm sure you were very happy with the deck choice, right? Um, I, I put a lot of thought into the deck choice, and this is the deck that I've been playing for a while. This is Brian Kelly, the Vintage Champs deck. He made a four-color deck uh, it's called Sylvan Mentor, and the fourth color is for Sylvan Library. Right, but what, but you're, but the deck you played in the Vintage thing online a few weeks ago did not have red, right? Uh, no, it didn't. I actually got... Right. So I had been pretty hesitant to play red on account of the three colors. If you look at my deck, it has two of each of the basics and two of each of the fetches. Right. I'm sorry, two of each of the dual lines. And of the dual lines, right. So, um, the mana base is sort of a mess, but what actually sold me on the red was the shops matchup. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Ancient Grudge, uh, Ancient Grudge gets non, I mean, this is what I was complaining about to you in the chat, like, I don't really understand non-prison shops. Like, it just feels like if, if I'm not preventing you from... Like, I kept an open hand game three. I had no no Chalice of the Void, no Sphere Resistance, no Tangle right. Wire, no anything. How right. can I possibly beat a deck that's full of card drawing and ancient grudges if I if you can cast your spells? It just seems impossible to me. If you... <laughs> I don't, so I, I, was, I was on Ravager Workshops even back when you could play for Chalice of the Void. And I... I think the Mentor matchup's fine. I mean, granted, Mentor was never a factor because I never drew it. I was too busy drawing Seekers and Dragon Lords. But um, if you can assemble, if you can get an Arcbound Ravager on the table and you can get that in conjunction with your Hangerback Walker, that would have been huge. I mean, even in Game 3, even as far behind as you were, if you had been able to assemble that contraption, yeah. it would have been... I mean, maybe I screwed up. I, that might have been where I screwed up. Like, I... I... I cast the sword instead of the Ravager, and, um... It's... It's tough. It's... The deck's really hard to play, and... You know, it requires a lot of really tough judgment calls. I mean, that's basically, like, my, my third match with the deck. Um, oh. Okay. And I, I so, think that maybe that was the mistake. At least I think I had the Ravager in my hand. I don't think I drew it off the sword, or... But honestly, I can't remember. Um... Well, it's it's not an easy deck. So I thought that there was a reasonable chance you'd play workshops. That's part of why I went with red. Um, I guess I hadn't expected you to be on the more aggressive build, but I do think it's the better build at this point. So my, my deck's actually a little bit in between. It's kind of like exactly in between um, Ochoa's list and Nick Detweiler's list. Like okay. um, it's re it's real it's it's kind of because I have one sphere resistance main deck where where um, Ochoa had zero, and I have another one on the board to bring in in matchups where I like it. Um, that makes sense. I just, yeah, I mean, maybe I should, should if I cast Ravager. It's also a little bit tougher because I wasn't sure on your deck list. It, it <laughs> right. made it harder to know um, whether I was supposed to cast Ravager there or not. Uh, maybe now, I don't know. I'm probably going to go back and watch it and just feel like I, I, I messed up. But uh, I, The deck is hard to play, and as we saw in the play, and you can be a very experienced workshop player, and some of the, the particulars of this build make it hard to pilot. Yeah. I keep looking over there at the chat to see if people are saying I punted, but maybe they already had that conversation. I mean, I certainly made a mistake in the match. I, in game two, I should have ancient grudged and then used the seeker rather than the other way around. Yeah, I noticed that, but... Yeah, that just, that was just a terrible mistake right there. But, uh, yeah, I guess if I... 
I don't get a sword hit in, but then I can't attack that turn. Just kind of annoying. Mm. And, and and you're going to untap, and you could easily have two removal spells. I don't know. But, and getting a getting a sword hit in is a pretty big deal. I mean, yeah, but I, could have, I think I could have cast Ravager. Oh no, they're telling me I drew Ravager off the sword. That makes more sense. Okay, because I was like, wow, why? Why didn't I? Because I didn't really think about. I I was wondering why my brain was not full of that. What was going to happen with that line? And it's because I drew Ravager off sword. I'm saying so. Okay, I feel better now because I was kind of confused. Okay, there um, you go. I mean, that, anyway, that yeah, I'm, not, that. I'm not sure I know how to play this aggro shops deck, and I definitely don't know how to play against what you're playing because I've just haven't played. I'm kind of uh, I haven't played much of this new vintage. So, how did you decide on Ravager workshops? Um, I decided at the very last second. I had four decks built. I had Ravager workshops. I had Merfolk. I had Storm, and I had Belcher. Okay. Um, Belcher, I was just having too hard of a time beating, like, Stony Silence. Like, mm -hmm. and the Stony Silence and Rob was just so annoying, and I felt right. like it just seemed too bad against Shops. It, it, I actually feel pretty good, and, and I feel really good with Belcher against everything except Shops and decks with Null Rod and Stony Silence. That makes sense. Those, those matchups are brutal. Like, I've had a lot of luck against the other combo decks, um, like especially because the other combo decks don't have strip mine. So once you get Academy into play, you can do things like, you know, just force a will for without pitching and just pack the negation and pay on your upkeep. Like, um, right. But I'm just so afraid of shops and uh, Merfolk. I I have never played Merfolk against Mentor, and I'm worried it's not as easy as it is against Young Pyromancer, which you're probably going to tell me that's true. <laughs> I mean, I. I have not very afraid of Merfolk with this deck. Right. I would have been very happy if I faced Merfolk. Right. I feel like Merfolk is great against Young Pyromancer, but the the um, the mentor just mentor just goes bigger. You can yeah, you get a goes... mentor, and he does what their entire deck does all by himself. Right. And the other problem is the mentor creatures get big enough where if you gush and return all your islands and block, my creatures might die. Like Young Pyromancer, right. if they gush and block, my creatures are probably still winning combat. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. so it's really different. I, I couldn't advocate Merfolk at, at this particular point, not with Mentor running around. Right. Um, you and know, Mentor's I, probably not good against Sword of Fire against either. Not so much. I can't imagine that. <laughs> or did I? Well, I mean, I was going to play four Null Rod, so that was mm. going to... We'll I see. like yeah, Null Rod in this metagame. In the Power 9 tournament, I actually played two main deck Stony Silence with a bonus copy in the sideboard. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. I um, I was checking out your deck list, and I was trying to figure out what you're playing. I was like, "Wow, this isn't what he's playing." I played a very similar deck. I, I changed Dragon Lords around. I, I noticed. I knew. So I saw the, that you stuck with Mono Dragon Lord Control. So the Dragon Lords are actually they're good, and they do something important. Um, if you're hauling on mentors for the win, you become really vulnerable to a lot of specific hate. I know that I've lost in um, in tournaments to things like. Dread of Night. And that's not what I wanted to do. A Dragon Lord comes at the opponent completely sideways, completely at a different angle. Right. I mean, I told, I completely agree with you. I love having the Plan B. I'm, I'm just, I haven't, I put, I have put zero thought into what Plan B should be. <laughs> so I'm not sure what it is. I definitely think Dragon Lord Ojitai makes more sense than Dragon Lord Dramoka for one important reason. Being blue. blue. It's blue. Yeah, <laughs> you knew. All vintage players know. I mean, if you have some card that maybe shouldn't be in your deck, you you gotta make it. Blue. <laughs> um, Being blue is important, and if I expected Delver or Landstill, then Dragon Lord Dramoke is the way to go. But for a lot of the other matchups, uh, Ujitai is really good. And again, this is um, this is all Brian Kelly, the vintage world champion's fault for getting the entire metagame, including me, to play Dragon Lords. I've even seen the uh, red, black one, Culligan, being played in Dredge. Wow, oh, really? That's crazy. All right, yeah, All right so I guess we should, we should talk about the match that we have coming up here. All right. Ready to go. Yeah. I, we don't know what they're playing, so we don't have to talk about deck lists. We don't. So what do we have here? Kai versus uh, Ochoa? Webb? The Ocho? How many I'm, games does he have? I'm so impressed by Ochoa's performance in the play-in. He played really, really well. Yeah. I mean, he was... He, he definitely... Uh, 
No, I don't think I watched his match versus Reed. Um, but uh, his other matches, he, you know, I think that the, at least for those for those games, he, he was playing better than his opponents, um, which is not surprising. You know, I, more... I have a lot of respect for Nick. I think he's a great guy, a great player, and a pillar of the community. But uh, Ochoa just played expertly in those matches. All right. Well, well I guess we're going to go down to the game. With one guess, though. What do you think they're playing? Oh, okay. I'm going to go with workshops for Ochoa. Um, hmm. Ty told me one card in his deck, so I, I can't... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess guys on a combo deck. Yeah. Those are going to guess decent guesses. Um, the card's not Illusions or Grandeur, is it? I really hope it's it is. It's not. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Kai's done well with that one, though. He has. He has. Well, I'm going to guess combo for Kai and workshops for... Uh, for Ochoa. All right. Um, I think we're headed down. All right. Well, Kai's got Tinker in his deck and Counter. I was half right. I was half right. Ochoa has workshops and Kai has. Kaizen, I, I don't know. There might be an illusions in there. Uh, so Ochoa won the role in this game is looking potentially over already. Oh, so <laughs> were you playing Triskelion in your deck, Chris? I, I was playing Triskelion. Okay. In fact, the only reason I did not concede that game was because I thought maybe if I drew Triskelion off the top, because I was holding a workshop, maybe I could somehow win. Triskelion's been just phenomenal. So. All right, so Kai Mulligan on the draw, and um, Ochoa, David. I don't know what I'm supposed yeah. to even call this guy. Oh. Every time someone mentions him, they use a different word. <laughs> um, Ochoa's going to have the first turn spear against a control deck that Mulligan, so it doesn't yeah. have force will, so this is going to be a yeah. tough game. Kai's essentially on five already on account of having Flusterstorm. Um, I can't imagine Counterbalance being particularly exciting against the Mishra's Workshop deck either. Mm. Counterbalance might be reasonable for countering zeros and ones, but oh, uh, and it looks like uh, it looks like Kai is just going to get locked out of this game by this Chalice. So well, yeah. So what would you do here? Would you Chalice for one? I would Chalice at one. Or you could yeah. Chalice for zero. I like Chalicing at one. If Kai had any mocks, and he'd already would have deployed them. And sure, but but. I guess Chalice on zero sort of locks out 30% of his mana sources or something. It, but it doesn't hurt Ochoa at all to play a Chalice at one. At most, it stops soaring. And it looks like Ochoa could still use a bit of mana. Yep. Now, this is this is really bad for Kai. It takes off his ability to draw land and play a Ponder. Um, there's a reason Chalice of the Void is restricted, and I think that's been... Um, you know, that's been really good for vintage. Oh yeah, I think it's great. I just just the de-emphasis on the die roll, I think, is is great. And you know, Kai drew a Kai drew a land. That's good. Um, so he's got access. to... LSP in the uh, chat is suggesting that we call David Ochoa Web because that will make things easier on the audience. We can call him. So he can't look quite cast Triskelion yet because of the sphere. No. And he can't cast the other two cards either. Um, I just like playing Tangle Wire here. Uh, I just like cutting him off for the turn, and then Webb can attack for two with impunity because any one drops are already blocked. And Kai can cast two drops. Yeah, and then and if he, oh yeah, he gets to attack for two. Yeah, and and, and he's, the tangle wire is going to do nothing to him. So if he draws a land, he'll still be able to try Skellion or cast or, or cast Ravager and attack. So right now, now Kai drew wasteland. wasteland. And so what do you think he's going to do with the wasteland? I think he has to leave it on the table and pass. I think so too. And I can't imagine he's happy about it, but he's so far behind in mana that 
making that one-for-one -one trade can't possibly be to his benefit. Yeah, I mean, maybe if there was a Mishra's workshop in play. I if maybe if there were a workshop, and I guess this gives him the option where if Webb plays a, a sword, then he can equip it. And this this Tango wire is just really nice here. Um, oh, and then um, there's Mishra's workshop, and now now of course. David can just dump his hand onto the table. Yeah, yeah. He's oh, no, he's, 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 no, he's, one he's, short. Yet, right? he's one short. Okay. Um, he can still play Triskelion and get in there for two. And yeah. I think he's lethal next turn. Which is crazy, but... Yeah, I, uh, I never drew a Triskelion, which helped me avoid some math. I noticed Triskelion is probably the scariest card in the deck, and it's sort of crazy to think about it. That the six drop from Antiquities, that... It's just another one of those things that's only played in Vintage, along with Slash Panther. Right. It's it's theoretically playable in Modern, isn't it? Uh, it would be really... I think it's Modern Legal. Uh, yeah, but in Modern, it would be strange. It would be, and I don't think anyone's going to be playing it in their Tron decks. No. But I guess they could, but in Vintage. So it's good for a couple of reasons. One, um, there are a lot yeah. of good things to do with those tokens. It passes it's only good for one reason. Come on. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's, it's best friends with that honorary Atog right there in Ochoa's hand. Sure, but you can play that card in Modern and Legacy, and you're still not going to play Triskelion in those formats. That's true. That's true. And just in case, there's a backup copy. But So I think we're actually going to get a demonstration of why this card is so good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, this is lethal. So what, what David can do is just... This is feed, fun. Oh, this, this is a lot of fun. I think we're going to get a lesson in why Triskelion is good in Vintage. Beyond his usual use of killing tiny Jaces and Monastery Mentors, um, we're going to see this powerful combination of cards. Triskelion and Arcbound Ravager team up together, and the way this works is the Ravager can eat all the artifacts on the table and throw them onto the Triskelion. The Triskelion goes from having three arms to having a whole bunch of arms, and then he can punch the opponent really hard with all those arms and then somehow throw all those arms at the opponent. I don't understand the science behind it, but I've seen it work. <laughs> so, I have a question for you. Imagine that Triskelion was Obsianus Gollum. That's just a 4-6 with no abilities, right? How likely would Webb be to win this game? Uh, I'm pretty sure that Obsianus Gollum would also win this game. <laughs> That's, I just, just want to point that out. Before yes, we get I, I, I agree with you. Here. I agree with you. Um, so is he going to go for it? Or is he hoping I think for the he has to. So he he has a spear, which guarantees that it's going to work. I mean, unless Kai has decided to put some Elder Spirit Guides into his deck. Right. I was, I was then, wondering if, there was, if, if you could come with a reason to not go for it. Fear of messing up? I don't know. It I seems mean, like a pretty straightforward play. Elder Spirit Guide, Abolish... It's, it's pretty unlikely. Unless they were playing Mental Magic, I think this is the thing to do. It's a big Triskelion. That, that is a gigantic Triskelion. So, you can't get the original artwork for this card on Magic the Gathering online. But the original art is basically a trash can with three arms. It's, it's some high-quality magic art. All right. So I guess we get to see some sideboard. By the way, I had no idea how to sideboard against you, but I guess we can talk about our match oh. later. Um, so Kai has Supreme... He has Moat. Moat. Oh, he has Dramoka. Kai has Dramoka. Moat's not quite as good because you can make hangerbacks. And you can also machine gun someone with Triskelion, but I'd still bring it in. You see that main deck? Is that a main deck energy flux? That is a main deck energy flux. That's hateful. And, and there's Kataki. 
So, so Ochoa has Quad Ley Line of Sanctity. That's a great card. That card stops Belcher. That card stops Oath. But I don't know how much, if at all, he's going to sideboard here. In fact, none of these cards look particularly exciting against what Kai is trying to do. Well, he doesn't know what Kai's trying to do. He just knows he's blue-ish, right? What did he yeah, see? Yeah, I guess that's true. Tundra? Uh, did Kai cast a spell? Um, did Kai cast a spell? Uh, not one that had any impact. So Kai has Vault Key in his deck? And, yeah, and, and Bite Steel. So he's bringing in Supreme Verdict, so that's interesting. I actually did not bring in Supreme Verdict against you. Um... Well, he's got a lot of... How many flusters from his mental missteps did he have to take out? Oh, that's true. That's true. So Kai doesn't actually have a lot of cyborg workshop hate, does he? It looks like he's main decking it. Yeah. It's, he, wait, is, that a, that's a, is that a rest in peace? This is a strange deck. That is a rest in peace. Um, I, I like Kai's deck. It's awesome. Well, I mean... <laughs> I know you enjoy a blue-white sampler as much as anybody. I do. I, I like the variety sampler. I mean, sometimes you want Dragon Lord Dromoka, other times you want to Vault Key people. And think about the combination of Supreme Verdict and Blightsteel Colossus. That's a combo. This is a, this is a very strange deck. Well, I, I like it. I'm a little surprised by the Ley Lines instead of the Witchbane Orbs. It's so, very strange to me. Um, the white ley lines, um, Montolio, uh, a powerful workshop wizard on Magic the Gathering Online has been favoring those. And they, they're an answer to Belcher if Belcher's on the play. They stop Oath really well, and they stop Hercules Recall, and, um, if you're, yeah, on the draw against the, if you're on the draw against the deck like Storm, a card like, uh, Witchman Orb might be too hard to cast. That, that's true. I mean, I cannot imagine wow. putting anything in your sideboard because you're worried about Belcher, because that matchup's like a buy. Yeah, Belcher Kai, just has, on. Kai has a turn to win. Uh, but it's not a deterministic win, is it's it? It's actually because not a win because of Mana Crypt. He could, he could, he, his deck probably takes a long time to win. That's right. He could actually lose to Mana Crypt. I mean, I still think you go for it there. And. Also, he could lose the straight line if No, he doesn't need he doesn't need that. Oh, not if, lose, but he could lose a turn, right? Oh, no, no, keep, no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. If they right. keep these hands, Kai can just lead with Time Vault, enlighten Tudor, go to his turn, and um yeah, yeah, you're, you're play right, a Volte key. So it's gonna be And Well, given the way things have gone for David, he'll just draw a Phyrexian Revoker here, and this won't matter. Oh, he drew a sphere. That uh, that won't quite be good enough. Yeah, no, it's just a uh, just a. Whoa, he went for the wasteland. Well, he can he can do everything. Oh right, right. I, I didn't even notice the Mox ruby. I'm I'm really just trying to. I was trying uh, to figure out how thinking of Kai's that. deck, and I was trying to think how quickly he's likely to draw a win condition. You're on the East Coast too, right? I know for me, I'm ah. I'm pretty tired. I shouldn't be staying up to watch this, but you know, I am. So So it looks like Kai's going infinite one way or the other, but well, I don't know who's going to win this game. He has very few win conditions in his deck and very little mana right now. So it's going to be a lot of turns. It's it's so a non-deterministic kill. That's right. So this and could, I mean, it could definitely take him twelve turns to win, right? It it easily could. It easily could. He has no blue he, mana. Right. He has no blue mana, and he has to use one mana a turn to perpetuate his engine. Um. I mean, this has to be really favorable for Kai. He gets to take well, all the turns. He's off. definitely a favorite, but I, but I don't actually think he's that. It's but I don't think he's. I, I, I don't think he's that huge of a favorite because his deck looked very light on win conditions. It. So I'm not playing Mana Crypt, and the reason I'm not playing Mana Crypt is in a controlish deck like that, it can do a lot of really bad things. He. You know? It's also funny. He doesn't. 
even have enough mana where he could like yet where he could like play a kataki and to kataki away his mana crypt and pay oh, for the no. multi key. You can play moat? No, we can't even play moat yet. Oh. <laughs> Of course, since he's, I mean, he hasn't taken a Mana Crypt hit yet, I think he's probably fine. He's been doing pretty well with this. Yeah. So this is like a really slow way to Yawgmoth's bargain, right? This is... Uh, it would be hard to script a less uh, exciting race, I guess. Although, I, I except guess for so. the, the feeling we all have of wanting Kai to lose this, but... Oh, Although some I, people I, are just always anti shops. I used to be. How can I not that. cheer for Kai? He has a snow covered non island basic land in play and a hand with Supreme Verdict and just a hilarious bunch of other cards. Oh, now he can play Crucible and use it. That's pretty good. Look at this a little bit of card advantage right here. Wait, did he just. Oh, for a second I yeah. thought he. I was kind of hoping he'd forget about Sphere or something. Ah. Uh, Nah, yeah. I'm rooting for Kai here. I'm rooting for Kai. His deck's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, if I weren't on, if I weren't on um, Sylvan Mentor, I would have been on Ravager Workshops. I do think that deck's incredibly well positioned, and given that, um, given that, you know. Ephro won the Power Nine tournament with Storm. I thought that it would be especially well suited to potentially a storm filled metagame. Um Yeah, I mean Nick Detweiler was saying he didn't actually think the matchup against Storm was that great. Um just really? because it's so easy for them to just uh it's just not that hard for them to set up a Herpel's recall. Uh, so this should I mean if oh, this should wait, he hasn't used time vault this turn has he oh he used time walk okay so yeah. that was a really interesting play there where Kai got mana and then stripped his own land and then used that to get a second blue source for Jace to arrive. That was pretty cool. Yeah, he seems really unlikely to lose this now. Ah, all right. There's Kataki. Yeah, game's over. All right, so... Yeah, Kai's got this. I don't think I've ever seen anyone Kataki away their own Metacrypt to avoid them. So, if you're Kai, do you, do you just fate seal Jace as much as possible to get information from David's deck? Before you get rid of your own mana crypt? Um, I mean, I'd assume that that's the correct play. I don't know what he's actually going to do. Why did he play Kataki this turn, though? Um, maybe he just wants to get this over with. Well, let me ask you this. If you were Kai, would you have, would you have just given Ochoa a turn here? Um... <laughs> I don't think I'm that brave. I don't think <laughs> I'm that brave. Just give him a chance. I'm, I'm not a very brave wizard. And we've seen Ochoa come back from some absolutely dire positions in the play-in. So, you know, I, you don't want to take that chance. You don't want Ochoa to let his sphere die and then play a, a Lotus and a land and play Eureka and put an Emrakul on the table. You know I like how he also gets to, to path to exile his own Kataki here and get a basic island. <laughs> Oh. That is a lot of value. I don't know why there hasn't been a concession. Oh, there we go. Ah, okay. There we go. Okay, so that started kind of boring, but it ended up just being amazing. Well, you know, Shops isn't the only deck that gets turn one kills. <laughs> That's true. Sometimes... I'm trying to see how... Uh, I'm trying to watch... Uh, web a sideboard here for my own. So he actually has a bunch of spheres this week. He did not have... Oh, you're right. Yeah. So I'm really excited about Kai's deck. Um, Enlightened Tutor is a potentially underplayed card in Vintage, and it looks like Kai... That's the unifying theme in Kai's deck, isn't it? Enlightened Tutor. Yeah. That explains... Yeah, Flux, Flux, Mode, Vault, Rest in Peace. 
Yeah. I don't know if I like building your deck around an enlightened tutor package and a but I guess the, the decks he wants it against don't have mental missteps in general? Yeah, it's certainly innovative, and if you expect there to be a lot of workshop decks and a lot of storm decks, which I think is a reasonable call coming into this, that's certainly what I was gearing up for, then this makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, so now... Um, so Ochoa's hand is very solid. You know, not amazing, but very solid. And is that Kion 6? I... No, you're just only seeing six for some reason. Oh, okay, because if you mulligan on the draw into a library, that's a bad feeling, but I'm always happy to keep whatever with a library on the draw at seven. I so, think in, ever... in Ochoa's spot here, uh, do you feel like you're okay just running the Revoker out on turn one, or would you rather just wait? Hmm. I think I'd rather wait. Because you have the Sphere, what I'd rather do is get the Sphere out, and then if Kai opens with a Mox... Then revoke the Mox. I don't think the two damage is worth not having the information of what Kai does at first. Well, you could also draw something that makes you wish you had that mana the next turn, too. So it's not just your damage. But I, I agree, I don't think I would run it out. Because yeah, just because you're holding two wastelands, so so getting one Mox seems huge. It does. So it, it also means that that Ochoa does not need to deploy his mana crypt this turn. True. You're right. Yeah. So Revoker is one of those cards, not unlike Library of Alexandria, which is often better on the draw than on the play. Of course, not running your Ancient Tomb out there turn one almost could be uh, give away the Wasteland information. I mean, everyone always plays around Wasteland, but every once in a while, there's just not a real option. So this is interesting. If you're Kai, do you lead with a library to basically build your own mini Teferi's response? Uh, yes. You have to. Although it's... I think you have to. I think that's right. I would never be thrilled about it, but I think it's right. Maybe you don't have to. I don't know. I have to think about it. I, I've not played with library in a really long time. You know, I've been really happy with both the one from Alexandria and also the one from the forest. They've both been pretty good for me lately. He said so, verdicts are funny. <laughs> I remember Chalice on four does not mm. stop Supreme Verdict. I don't know how much I like this play from Ochoa. I don't think I would do this. Cast the Revoker? Um, no, it's it's not that. It's that instead of playing the mana crypt, you could have played the ancient tomb. Yeah, I don't. I don't really get I mean, that part. I agree. But, and plus, why give away the information that you have another wasteland? Yeah, that's true. I mean, I two damage now different. versus one and a half damage every turn forever. Plus, giving the, the information away. Or maybe Luis is going to tell us why he did that, but I'm not sure. Time vault. I mean, I like playing the Revoker here. That's fine. Um, I just I just would have used different mana sources to do that. Yeah, I, I feel like giving away the Wasteland is a lot of information. It is. And giving so, away Ancient Tomb is... This is, this is why I don't bring in Supreme Verdict for this matchup. I don't really get... And he brought in, like, three, right? So I have two on my sideboard, and I think the card is really good in token creature mirror matches. I just don't like it at all here. It's, if you can cast Supreme Verdict, you're already beating the Workshop deck. And it's five mana, three of which have specific color requirements. Well, I guess against... Um, w because of Hanger Backwalker, I guess there are some situations where you have mana, but you aren't beating the Workshop decks. Like, there, sure. there is... It's it's not a card that's entirely devoid of utility. I just don't think it's worth bringing it in. Now, if I guess if Kai had not enough useful cards in his sideboard, that's one thing. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure that Kai's deck is somewhat of a brew. Yeah. Like so, the idea that he would have like a a perfectly built seventy five where he has exactly the right amount of cards to to take out and bring in in the most common matchups is pretty unlikely. I mean. Like I said, I think Kai's deck is awesome. Um, 
Yeah. And I can't let that crucible happen. So. Yeah. I think I brought in crucible against you game three. Uh, crucible's never bad. It's because I had Dak Fade and Crucible gets a lot worse against me. So if you're going on the list that I played in the Power Nine tournament, Crucible makes sense. Um, once Dak happens, I think Crucible gets a lot worse. That's usually my margin. My um, yeah, I do have four Ravagers, but yeah, and I I like ra I like Crucible against non Dak decks, and I don't like it against Dak. I think it would be main deckable if it weren't for Dak running around. And speaking of Ravager, there he is. I, I like the Tangle Wire here more than the Ravager. I agree. Yeah, I mean, assuming you're not doing anything crazy with the Ravager, I mean, this is the, yeah. I mean, Ravager is very different against like the Ancient Grudge decks. Against Ty, who's basically only shown blue and white, the Ravager's not as interesting. Right. I think. So, if I was going to say that this is more of a suicide black deck than a Delver deck, but so for those of you watching at home who haven't heard of these decks, in a Delver deck, you deploy your threat on turn one, Delver of Secrets, and then you sort of use card uh, draw, but also a lot of disruption to keep the opponent um, sort of off his feet for the rest of the game. Whereas in a suicide black deck, that's an old deck where you'd often throw a duress and then a hint to Torak at your opponent, and after you've already used your disruptive cards, then you play a creature. And I I like to play this Ravager Workshop deck more like the latter, where I'd rather, in the general case, get my my lock piece onto the table first and then play the creatures to limit the amount of time the opponent has to crawl out from under the lock pieces. Yeah, I gotta say, I I I I see how the Ravagers and the and the equipment and the hangerbacks are good. I still feel like having all the lock pieces is better. Like I'm not saying you can't have Ravagers in your deck, but man, I, I really like the lock pieces. I mean I like them I like them too. I think um I like the lock pieces everywhere except the mirror match. So Well obviously the mirror is a huge it's a huge disadvantage. And if, if I were going to play this deck, I would play... I would still play Ravager, but I would also have lock pieces in it. Yeah. I, I don't like... Go ahead. So there are some completely aggro versions of this deck. Um, I think they've called it Tiny Robots that eschew everything except four, sphere, or four thorns and instead opt to play uh, Genesis Chamber and Skull Clamp and... Um, Do they play I, Tangle Wire still? Uh, I don't think it plays Tangle Wire. I think I it's just... Really so Ochoa's deck, Ochoa's deck in the playing tournament was just the four thorn version. He had no spheres of resistance. Right, but he wasn't playing. So um, I've seen builds that have Mem Knights and Signal Pests right. and are actually aggro decks, and I don't like that strategy very much. I I would rather have a a mix of lock pieces and uh, and the aggro components. Right. So. So, like, Nick Detweiler in the playing tournament still had three spheres of resistance in his deck. Right. I like his list. David, David Ochoa had none, but he did have mm -hmm. the Trina Sphere. Um, I had a lot of people talking to me this week complimenting Ochoa's list, saying they really liked it. Um, they really liked the Metal Workers. I, I like Nick's list, and... Um... I like a lot of what Nick's list does. I think that Ochoa did beat Storm, and I think that his list was much better. His list was less suited to do that, and he did do that, and that was huge. Um, but I think that the matchup wasn't as favorable for him as it was for Nick. Oh, I, I agree. Yeah, I actually saw, like I said, my list is in between. I, I have one three of resistance. I only have two metal workers. Um... So, I kind of cut down on cards that I didn't want to draw multiples of. That makes sense. I've I've tried Metal Workers. Um, I've never quite gotten them to be as awesome as I think they theoretically could be. Right. I mean, they have Suspend 1, Win the Game on them, which is big. They don't... 
I mean, maybe. Okay, if you play so it the first not, couple times, they do. We're not saying much about what's happening on the screen here, but that's because no. Crucible happened, and now... We've, we've, by not saying anything, we've fully described Kai's board. Yeah. Um, we're, we're just seeing an angry Ravager and its good friends lock pieces. Um, if he could just come up with a way to path his own Blightsteel and get that Kataki into play... I think that at this point, the Juggernaut is actually just waiting for that Eureka that we talked about earlier. I think that's his out. But he has played around Tanglewire expertly. <laughs> and I really feel like I got I got rickrolled here by only playing a, one sphere because Ochoa played zero in the play-in tournament and thinking that he must know something I didn't know and then seeing him go all the way up to three or whatever, now I feel like a chump. <laughs> ah, there's... Well, it's just a metagame call. Well, Shops, as we've seen so many times, was the victor. Yeah, Shops. Shops is really good. You know, I think Shops is... It's... People were worried when they restricted um, Chalice that it wouldn't be good anymore. And I think it's been proven again and again that uh, Shops is still Tier 1. Yeah, I mean, I never thought it wasn't going to be. Um, oh, I never thought it wouldn't be either. Um, I know it had people deeply concerned about the archetype, but it looks like Mishra is doing just fine for himself. Right, but that's because so much of the vintage community plays the same deck forever. So whenever anything makes their deck worse, they're deeply concerned about the archetype. <laughs> You're right. You're right. I, I, I think some people took it pretty personally when Chalice got restricted. But um, yeah. here we see Mishra's Workshop still doing well and still, uh, you know, if, if I weren't on a Dragon Lord, I would be on Mishra's Workshop. It's, I think it's that good. Well, it's one and one Shops went one and one tonight, unfortunately yeah. for me. Oh. Um, yeah, right. close games. Um, yeah, what's up next here? Uh, what is next? I don't know. It's not going to be us. Oh, Tom Martell versus Bob Maher. Wow. One of those guys I'm... is a Hall of Famer, and one of them is Tom Martell. It's a, <laughs> big, it's a pretty big spread. I, I, I always look forward to Bob's decks. I think he builds some really interesting decks. Yeah, I mean, he, he he has built some interesting decks. He built that one deck that really couldn't win. <laughs> That's how David Williams described it, I think. Like, he just couldn't really win. He had fast bond. He was supposed to fast bond into something. Yeah. Um, fast bond. Um, did it have a fireball in it? Yeah. Kervik's Torch, maybe? Oh, right. That's even better. That's hard to counter. Yeah, yeah. Kervik's Torch. And he, built a, and he played a Time Vault deck in Season 1, the third set when nobody was playing Time Vault. I lost to that one. Um, hey, he, when I was on Control Slaver, he um, he beat me to death with his Invitational card. Oh, well, that's... We've all done that. That's a good Invitational <laughs> card. <laughs> so, uh. so, yeah, Tom versus Bob. Let's see, we don't know the deck lists. Um, to make even more of a mystery, I don't know who's going to be doing commentary. Luis and Webb. Luis okay. and Webb. Luis Scott Vargas. That is, uh, you know, really what more could he ask for? Yeah. Well, is, is Webb going to have a, a camera this time, or is it just going to be his picture again? Camera. Oh, okay, camera good. good. So, all right. I guess Kai's going to bed. Mm. He, doesn't, he doesn't want to do commentary tonight, or is he in later? Not a bed for Kai. All right. All right. No more Kai tonight. Oh, Kai's in Germany? Oh, okay. All right. I have no idea what time it is there, but it feels like here in Massachusetts, and what time is it? It's not that. 10.30. 10.30? Not too, too bad. Okay. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what these guys are going to be playing. Tom has been known to lose with Dredge and uh, do... <laughs> Yeah, so that's not, true. Dredge is not served him well, so he's probably not on that. I guess, I I guess Dredge, he's on, on Storm. I think Dredge is 08. No, I thought 1 in 10, I thought. Was it 1 in 10? Okay. 
Um, Storm's a reasonable choice. I, you know, after seeing Efro take down the Power Nine tournament, I think Storm's a great choice, and I know that I was heavily sideboarding for Storm. Right. So I would guess that Tom's most likely deck is Storm. Um, I'm, I'm going to put Bob on an awesome control deck. Bob is probably on an awesome control deck, but Bob could play shops. I think. But I think Bob's range is pretty wide. Yeah. Um, so Tom's range is also pretty wide, but I feel like there's a couple decks that have been so bad to him that he's probably not going to go back to them. That's, um, that's a reasonable. You know, no, but Tom, Tom can play anything. I think that's one of his his strengths is he doesn't really. You know. I mean, there there are a lot of people in this league that are. They have a lot of range. Trying to figure out what you were going to play tonight, I really, you know, I I think that anything in the format is something you could play. So it was really yeah, tough I, to try to... I think people peg me on shops, but I think I've only played shops in a little more than a third. Maybe one more than... Well, uh, I, was, I was thinking it was going to be shops, storm, or land still. I haven't played land still in quite a while. But uh, I could see it. I could see it in this format. Shops, okay. shops is I think uh, Landstill I think is the right choice if you're expecting to face Storm and Workshops. Uh, I think that's reasonable. Um, I would have to see what a new uh, what the new build looks like. So. Oh, so. All right. All right. Are those uh, those guys going to tag in or what? All right, it looks like they're going to head off to uh, add. So, uh, Chris, good games. and um, yeah, good games. Congrats on the victory. Yeah, thanks. Just great, great match. And, uh, yeah. All right. I guess we'll see you folks back here, or whoever's commentating next. We'll see you back here in a few minutes.